In this video we're going to be jumping into more Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League I'm going to be going over some hints and tips that can really help you out throughout your playthrough. This is going to be stuff that's going to help you get to endgame and just get more from the game overall. Now first off, and probably one of the most essential one, is going to be from the start, it's going to chuck you into the tutorial, and here you'll be able to try out each of the characters. With this, the first thing I would say would be to make sure that you like the traversal of the character and the guns that it's going to be using, and then you'll probably be able to work out which one you're going to main. Obviously you may want to play more than one, you can definitely do that, as you can swap them in between each mission. But if you want to decide which character you're going to be using the most of, I'd highly recommend whatever one has nice weapons that you like using, and has a traversal effect that you think works well then that'll probably be the one you want to look to whether it be jetting about with Deadshot, using the speed force with captain boomerang the zip wire with harley or of course king sharks hulk like jumping around one of these will definitely stand out for you so pick a character you'll definitely want to invest in now another thing that you may well want to look at is going to be the actual difficulty level. I found that this game could actually be quite relentless. On the hardest difficulty some of the enemies and some of the bosses can take an absolute age if you're not geared up properly and one or two mistaps could definitely mean the end of you. The first one when you put it to the normal standard difficulty is going to give you a kind of base with no extra XP and no extra resources. The medium one is going to give you a little bit extra with 10% XP and 15% extra resources and the hardest this one is going to give you 20% XP and 30% extra resources. I would say though stick to the medium one or even the lesser one depending on how your playstyle is until you get a little bit of a build on because otherwise it can mean the game takes a little bit longer to get through as the enemies have more health and they can take you down much easier. Especially if you're under geared the toughest setting can be a bit tough early on. Now if you do want to level up a little bit faster there's two ways that I found that are probably the best in the game. The first one you're going to learn very early on, sight up missions for your character mean they get massive amounts of extra XP and they're tougher within the mission so that makes it a little bit easier to complete. For example here we've got Captain Boomerang, he's psyched up, he wants to be the captain that means he's going to be the leader and get more XP for that mission. As well as this though you can also grab some nice XP on your gear each piece of gear can have XP bonuses on it and that can also help you to rack up levels much much faster as you're playing through the game. Next up and we're going to be going over one of the most important mechanics in the game and one of the kind of most difficult to pull off and that's going to be shield harvesting. Shield harvesting is going to be how you maintain your shield, is how you stay alive, is how you have a kind of overshield on top of your health and without this you're going to be in trouble very fast. I found doing a shield harvest was actually quite difficult. You've trained yourself from a young age to shoot body and upwards trying to aim for headshots for the crits. With shield harvest you actually have to shoot them in the legs until they're shield harvestable. Then you're going to go in with a melee and get back a lot of your shield. I would definitely recommend whenever you can if there's other ways to do this try to put that into your build so if you've got things within your skill tree or later on if you're able to put them on your weapons through certain modifiers and such this can definitely help you out massively as well as that once you unlock your suicide strike this is also going to really help you out because when you defeat an enemy with it it's going to drop you some shield pickups allowing you to stay in the fight more jumping over to another integral part of the game and you've got your combo meter your combo meter is going to allow you to get much more powerful when you're doing those missions because it's directly linked to your skill tree. The higher it is, the more you've put into your skill tree, the more powerful your character's going to be. You'll see quite a few skill tree upgrades saying at 20 times combo, 30, 40 or even 50. In order to have those in effect, you're going to need to have that combo meter filled up to that point. You can do this by chaining combos together, hitting enemies with your melee, going into your weapons, and certain skill nodes within your skill tree can help you to build this up faster as well. In general, the higher the combo, the more powerful you are, but it can dwindle down, especially if you're getting hit, or you're missing shots, or if you're leaving it a certain amount of time before you fight the next enemy, then it's either going to dwindle down or completely go back to zero. Over to your skill tree and as we said earlier as you progress through the game once you're leveling up you'll be able to allocate a skill point each time or a talent point should I say and it will give you certain perks certain upgrades or it'll make something you're investing in a little bit stronger. You're going to be able to invest these all the way up to level 30 and the cool thing about your skill tree is that you can reset it at any time with absolutely no cost. So if you wanted to change things up a bit you wanted to make a completely different build you can do that whenever you want which is absolutely amazing especially if you want to change it because you've just found a new weapon or playstyle you're after trying. One piece of advice I'd give though even though it sounds amazing to put everything into DPS, if you can pick up some of your shield harvesting or extra health or shield, try to put that in at some places as later on some of the game can get quite difficult. Over to another mechanic that's definitely worth knowing about and quite a lot of fun to play. It reminds me a little bit of Devil May Cry and that's going to be the juggling in this game. 
If you go straight in with your melee attack, hit them up into the air, and then aim at them and shoot them with whatever weapon you've got, that's going to be a guaranteed crit. Basically, it's going to be a bit like juggling them in the air and make them take a lot of damage. Now, this works on most of the enemies, but some of the elites or some of the bigger ones, it doesn't, unfortunately, because you can't knock them off the ground. But if you're trying to get some easy crits and you're trying to take out enemies fast, this works absolutely ideal. Now another simple tip, but one that's well worth knowing, is going to be about your resources and your money. As you're playing through the game, you're going to earn a lot of money and resources, whether it be through contracts, playing the game normally and defeating enemies, or you can get some nice ones when you're doing certain missions that will reward lots of resources, but most times these are really worth holding on to, as they can go down quite fast. And up until a very late game, a lot of it isn't really worth spending. I found myself respecing some of the weapons, using quite a bit of it to change up things throughout my playthrough, and then when I got later into the game, I realised that everything I'd done wasn't really worth it quite as much, and I really wish I'd kept hold of it. I would say if possible, try not to spend too much money and resources early on in the game, leave it to a little bit later, until you've got an ideal weapon or a perfect bit of gear for your build. Another thing you can do with your gear, such as your weapons and your grenades, is put afflictions on them. These, in some cases, can be quite game changing, and they're a lot of fun to play with. Poison Ivy will have a whole host of afflictions that you can chuck onto these that can completely change up your way of playing, but sometimes you'll definitely want to build around these, or make sure they fit into your playstyle, because even though some of them have some great benefits, each one also comes with a negative. One that definitely embodies this is going to be Diablo Blaze. This one is amazing for absolutely decimating enemies' health, because it's going to burn them over 20 seconds, doing a lot of damage to them and most times taking out the enemies for you. However, once they are on fire, you're not going to be able to shield harvest them. So if you're getting taken out by snipers or you're having a tough time of things, you might not want to put Diablo Blaze into your build until you've got a way of maintaining your health and your shield some other way. These afflictions can be very game changing, but sometimes you have to build around them rather than just chucking them on and hoping for the best. Now this is a looter shooter, so obviously gear and weapons is going to be a massive part of the game, and luckily Suicide Squad has this in abundance. These, like in most games, are going to be different rarities, but the best ones you're going to be aiming for will be legendary, infamous, and notorious pieces. And they all have their own distinct feel to them. Some of them hitting a little bit harder, but maybe having slower rate of fire, others being a bit more accurate and have some more stability. Now, even though stats are great, the main thing I would say with these is that you're going to want to try and get a perk on these weapons that you'll probably want to build around for your character. For example, with this weapon here, the free flow perk I've got on this is going to be melee hits give me four combo each time, and I can use my Suicide Squad whenever I get to 20 combo, although it does take all 20 combo straight away from it. So I'll be losing combo constantly, but I'll also be able to pull off a Suicide Strike much faster than usual. As you'll start making your way through the game, you're probably going to edge towards the legendary, notorious and infamous weapons and gear sets, because they give you the best stats overall, and the notorious and infamous sets also give you certain bonuses when you start stacking a few of the same set pieces within your build. One nice thing that I found, if I've got the perk on the weapon exactly as I want, it's in my build, I don't really want to change the weapon up but I did want to change up some of the modifiers go to your penguin go over to overhaul and he's going to kind of re-roll all of those on it sometimes you'll be able to get some really great changes although it does go up each time so you may only want to do it a few times before you start overspending and invest too much into it now lastly, the very max level that you can get on a character is going to be 30, you'll be able to unlock your entire skill tree, one per branch then, and of course reset it whenever you want. However, at 30 you're also going to be able to unlock squad skills. This is going to be really nice as it's going to boost your whole squad, and every time you're levelling up with a character over 30, you'll be able to invest in one of these tiles, enhancing all your characters and giving you something to aim for and to play for further. This can definitely take quite a while with investment, but it can really help you to pull off some nice damage with your team and make yourself a lot stronger for some of those really tough challenges. For example, grabbing yourself some extra shield, extra damage on your main weapon, or maybe even a little bit more health. But yeah, hopefully these tips have helped you. There's going to be a load more content from me over the next couple of weeks. As always, for Things Gaming, take care. I'll see you on the next day.